Hey everyone, I'm going to try and upload more videos to my channel each week. Now, I don't want you to miss anything, so please click the little bell icon next to the subscribe button, and that's going to send you a notification every time I upload. Today I'm going to be showing you the whole process of prototyping this, and then we're going to go back and 3D print a lot of the pieces because there's not always the correct fitting that you can just buy from the hardware store. And so I'm able to imagine them and draw them on the paper, so it's pretty easy to go from this and to just basically reverse engineer it using 3D printing. And the software that I always use is Fusion 360, which is by the company Autodesk. They're calling it the Notification Squad. Maybe we'll call it the Gadget Squad. I don't know. If you have a better name for it, Leave a comment below, I'd love to hear what you have to say. And also, I want to thank you all for your suggestions for the Spider-Man web shooter combinations. But I think that one of the things I need to do on my channel is build the community. And by showing you sort of my thought process and designs on how I actually do everything before I actually make it, I think that that could help you and your making abilities and how to maybe design things and also you can give me some ideas and pointers that may affect the final result. You can imagine that this is actually what we have here. So it's cool to go from like a sketch, a thought, to actually making it in real life. Now, most of this is just parts and fittings you can buy from the hardware store, which, like I said, it's going to be a very basic prototype, but it will work a lot better. And obviously having two of these valves is going to give us a lot more power. Now these are CO2 bike pumps and I had to modify them slightly so I'll show you that in a second how I did so. Really easy. Excuse my really rough sketch but essentially what we have here is a mechanism that's going to allow you to pull down on a handle and it's going to be this thing here which you can kind of tell. This is actually going to be pulling down and forward a mechanism that's actually going to press these forward. Now I'm going to probably shorten this barrel because it's a little bit ridiculous the amount of space that we have here and I'm going to make a custom fitting probably 3D printed. I have a feeling that ABS plastic and or, or even PLA would probably give us a fitting and hopefully I can get some dissolvable filament to do some of these things which would be really cool. Alright so this handle is actually from a broken mop that someone was tossing out and I really liked the design of it. I thought that it would work for something. So I held on to it and here it is. Alright, so now I'll show you how to modify this CO2 bike pump. The valve is super tiny. It can hold a lot of gas and pressure. This is really an essential part. Now to modify this, you want to take off this cap here. Now you can see that there is this little pin here and grab a screwdriver and then this just comes right out now you can see this is really airtight because there's an o-ring there then we have this piece you can just put that back on if you want really simple now I've taken this little T this is probably quarter inch pipe, I don't know, I don't care. But this portion right here is actually from a 732nd brass rod and I cut off a piece using this little tool here and just kind of screw it in place. That actually gives you enough extra girth to allow it to bite into the threads and then you can kind of turn this piece in. And then you take this and it kind of pressure fits in there I mean I could get some like glue or epoxy but this is just a prototype I think as long as these are glued in place it shouldn't and it's airtight right now but the tendency is that it's gonna basically shoot off so this gives me enough bend or I can wrap it around the arm mounting plate which is actually been salvaged from a toy. Now this is the final setup. I took one of these eighth inch quick release valves and I added one to the barrel. I could JB weld this in place but I just don't want to 
because it's permanent and I have no idea if this is going to be even the final thing to be honest with you but I took some o-rings so I just kind of press fit those into place what I would plan on doing is I would have different attachments for your web shooter combinations where I could just really easily remove this barrel and attach a different barrel if I wanted to attach let's say like a, a valve to attach this to a paintball tank like this all I'd have to do is just rotate this backwards and just plug it in right there and that way I wouldn't have to worry about using these CO2 cartridges so I got this little toy from the Goodwill and it's a pretty cool little mechanism because there's some sort of switch in here that turns on and activates all the sounds and lights I actually found like, two of these and I decided to just grab this little plate off here and we'll use that as the mounting plate. This piece, which the reason that I wanted these hoses in the first place is because I wanted that flexion so that I could basically have something like this. Now I know that this looks like a 12 year old um, drew it and no offense to any 12 year olds but this little piece here is kind of what I'm trying to do is create this little sort of flexion so that it will bend around the actual barrel right here. But the whole point is that you can still rotate this backwards and so the idea would be if you were to be on some sort of mission where you need a whole bunch of CO2 cartridges and you don't want to swap these out you could always go to this remote line which is basically to attach a paintball tank to your backpack now you can see all this tapers inward kind of like a v-shape So by flattening this, it'll make it a little bit easier to drill, I'm hoping. All right, so it's kind of crooked. All right, let's try it out. Turns out that I actually don't have any more CO2 from these paintball tanks. I'm thinking that if these are angled, and if I 3D print some sort of fixture to allow to have the same orientation of, fle of these sort of how they're angled, that whenever this is actually flipped backwards, that it will flare out on my arm like this and allow me to very easily grab it, detach it, and then since it's at an angle, it will flatten back down to where it needs to be. Alright, so we just kind of put that in there. That's going to stab right into my wrist. So that's nice. I'm going to end up cutting that off with a, a tool or something, but that will do, donkey. That will do. So if we're looking at it like right there, and it just screws right in there and makes it a pretty nice seal. Attach it to this. And that's about what we want there. Alright, so now we have two of these. Screw them in here. Place him in like so. I don't know why I'm using a southern accent. Do I want to put it there or do I want to center it? I, I did done now. I done now. Probably on top of this piece of plastic here. Just 
put a dot there, there. I don't know, I don't care. Just the more I think about it, the more I'm just like, it doesn't matter. The more I think about it, dent. But like, I'm not gonna go crazy over it, even though I'm already crazy, but I mean like actually crazy, like no pretend crazy. Boom. All right, and there's the other bolt. <laughs> These are actually looking really awesome. And you know why? It's because I'm running right back to my roots, people. Just, just when I didn't give a shit. I mean, I knew I didn't give a shit. Like now, I just really don't give a shit. What to do, what to do. All right, so <laughs> not bad. I'm actually really surprised. Alright, so what I'm thinking about doing right now is giving up. No. I, this little piece right here is actually a nice little pulley, and so I'm probably going to epoxy or uh, acrylic glue it to this piece here, and then that's going to transition all of the force downward onto this pulley system, this little uh, rotating wheel, and then whenever I pull on this thing, this rope, by attaching it to this and pivoting it on this part, I'll have like another piece that goes down. This will go forward, which will pull the string, which you can see is pulling down the uh, piece there. So I actually have some of these parts, metal pieces from a building set that I actually bought from the dollar store, kind of bent these pieces right there to make a little bracket to allow this sort of hinge. All right, so I've plastic bonded, but yeah, these seem, they're on there pretty tough. <laughs> it's actually like condensation from that uh, CO2. All right, so to actually go and fire this thing, you're gonna take your grappling hook and put it into the barrel. This design is almost identical to what Colin Furs did in his video, so I want to make sure that he gets credit for the design of having this sort of reverse grappling hook, and I thought that was really ingenious of him, so kudos to him. He's an awesome maker, and he's a plumber, which is awesome. I love people who just kind of are ingenuitive and just take the initiative to make awesome stuff. He's one of my favorites. And then also, I had a sufficiently advanced, Alan Pan is his name, he left a comment about similarities between these grappling hooks. I will agree there are similarities, but there's some other designs that I was looking at online for some pocket grappling hooks where they sort of are two pieces of metal that um, interlock in a similar fashion. And I won't deny that I saw his video on uh, the grappling hook that he made and really uh, was impressed by his PLA grappling hook and how that actually worked. All right, so I actually stayed up till three o'clock in the morning just to finish this design and then I had to edit all the footage for the video today. So pretty much running on empty 
and I didn't have anyone to really help me film the video of me testing this with the grappling hook. So you'll have to wait until this week. There's only so many weekends left until the actual release of Spider-Man. So that's why I asked you at the beginning of the video to turn on your notifications so that you don't miss any content from me. So next episode, I'm going to basically be testing this out outside and we'll see how well it works and if adding the extra cartridge will actually help it. I was reading some comments and it seems like people aren't really convinced that this is enough power, but I really do think that this will be good for the purpose. And also, I'm going to start working on some different designs for maybe some different web combinations. I had an idea to use this great stuff, expanding foam, and maybe having a tube run down to the barrel and then I could just basically purge and fire out like a blast of this sticky foam and that would be kind of annoying. Much better than silly string but not really dangerous in any way. But this stuff can get pretty corrosive. I mean I wouldn't want to get it in my eye and it says that it is flammable so um, that's kind of interesting. So, well, who knows? I really hope that I'm inspiring all of you to be creative and to make stuff. That's honestly my mission, is to help people realize that they have creative superpowers. Alright, so thank you so much for watching. Keep on creating, and take it easy. Bye. Give it a like, too.